Another modern audience disaster. Oh boy, it's my favorite. Earlier today, the review embargo for Dragon Age The Veil Guard has officially lifted, and now there's lots of new and interesting information being released about the game. Mm -hmm. One of the more common critiques seems to be with the dialogue. Some examples of that can be seen with this character, Tosh. Jathan said to eat the fruit before it spoils. I like the cookies better. Everyone likes the cookies better. I'll eat the fruit, thank you. I'll see you soon. So, the Dragon Hunter has a softer side. The Kuhn says you take care of people. So, you're a little Kunari, a little Ravani, and a little dragon? I get that. I should tell my mother how Karash is doing. On top of people criticizing the awkward dialogue and the voice acting, many would also point out that pop-up on the left-hand side. You can see it reads, You've chosen to encourage Tosh by focusing on the benefits of a multicultural background. Good boy! Good boy! Good boy! For example, one commenter would say, It's totally fine to believe that multiculturalism is a good thing. But to uh -huh. feel that it needs to be an actual plot point spelled out in plain writing. Well, the problem is when you write it out in plain writing like that, it kind of makes it lame. You want to show the player the results of that, not tell them. When you tell them like in plain text, it doesn't really make a connection with you. An epic tale of good versus evil, then it's nothing more than literal politics being shoved down our throats. It's also more evidence of how a racially diverse cast equal entire thing is going to be loaded with preachy on the nose social lecturing. Ugh. Pretty telling when- Dude, that's the problem is like, who wants to play a game where the entire thing is them just lecturing you about being a better person? <laughs> Companies like this are what the fuck, to man? Game without also making it feel so shallow and fake. Yeah, After that's all, it. It feels so many fake. Games that have actually included a very diverse cast of characters. And it turns out when the games aren't so preachy about the whole thing, it comes off much more natural. And those games often find far more success. Another clip that's going viral in gaming circles is this one. I'm from Ravain. Not like I follow the Kune. You've got the arm ropes. I wear a lot of stuff. You don't get to tell me who I am. Doesn't matter anyway. The Antom don't follow the Kuhn either. Not anymore. A Dragon Age fan, or perhaps now an ex-Dragon Age fan, would say, Man, that second clip makes me mad. The Kuhn is what made the Qatari so interesting. Another post reading, mm -hmm. Nothing screams a fantasy. I don't more. actually know that much about the Kuhn or whatever. I'm not really versed on Dragon Age lore, to be honest. The modern day gender lingo, How did gaming get here? The provided screenshot shows Tosh saying, Non-binary, I just said, and I'm going to use they instead of she from now on. <laughs> Back to the topic of the review embargo, as well as what some people are saying about the reviews. Around six hours ago, Fextra Life posted a very interesting video about the game. He opens by talking about their history of covering Dragon Age content, including saving the Bioware forums and being in constant communication with EA and Bioware for years. EA had also invited them to attend the official Veilguard preview event back in September. And after attending the event- Yeah, it's so immersion breaking. Yeah, exactly. It is. It really is. Same there. They made their impressions video <clears throat> in their preview video. They were essentially cautiously optimistic. Dude, I'm still confused. Dude, I, I, I honestly, I feel like I'm living in some kind of like alternate dimension. Like, dude, the fact that Tumblr actually leaked out into like the real world is fucking insane. It's wild. It's so wild. Uh, how, how did it happen? Enjoying some things about Veilguard, but also critiquing other things like the character designs and models. In general, it was a pretty positive impression of the video. And I want to play for you the closing audio from that video right now. So you can see what okay. we told our audience at the end of that video. Okay. I still have issues with the game, mainly that I don't like the UI and that the dialogues didn't seem to be on par with what you could get in other story focused mm -hmm. games that have come out in the last decade. And then when does this game come out? Should I play it, guys? Should I play it? I didn't yet get a point where I felt a bond or much interest with my companions who are integral to the story. No, wait, you're telling me you don't want to see me play it. It's funny that I have pretty much been playing these games for the story and getting through the combat. Uh -huh. The point he's making is that their first impressions video was extremely mild. And some people even said that if anything, they were being too positive about the game. And yet it seems like that very impressions video actually upset EA. As after that video was released, they entirely ceased communications with Fextra Life. Fextra Life then reached out to other contacts to try and figure out what was going on. And they found out that- They fucking mad, dude. Other creators as well were getting fake assurances from EA that they would be given a code for the game to access it early in order to put out an early review. It turns out that that wasn't the case, as the codes never came, and the communications continued to cease. This is similar to the situation that we discussed just the other day regarding Wolfheart FPS. Interestingly enough, a Spanish trader had reported that she actually lied to Bioware, telling them that she's non-binary. And believe it or not, she actually did receive a code. Someone had responded to her tweet in the included images, saying zero time played seems a little sus though, to which she responded with a clown emoji and showed that she actually now has an hour and a half played, proving that she does indeed have access to the game 
game before its official release. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Bioware had actually retaliated against her over this entire situation, as she showed evidence that she had received a DMCA strike, going on to say that the tweet that was hit was the one where she was talking about receiving that- So wait, they didn't give you codes unless you tell them that you're non-binary? Is that real? code from Bioware. However, she went on to appeal the strike, Twitter seemingly taking her side and releasing her account. Now, returning to Fexter Life in the context of their most recent video on Veilguard, the one where he talks about not receiving a code to get that early review out, well, he goes on to make a very compelling argument about why EA is operating in such a manner, basically claiming that this is a way for them to manipulate the upcoming reviews and ensure that most of the early reviews are going to be positive ones. This would oh, then man. allow them to manipulate the sentiment around the game, making it seem overly positive around the time. You know what, though? You might not agree with this take but I, I i actually think that it makes sense and it's it's smart of them to do that honestly I'm if they can get away with it of course <laughs> Please. with the ultimate goal of having boosted sales obviously guys... obviously if you're like a company and you're going to give out some free review codes you want the free review codes to go to people that are going to give you a positive reviews told us in no uncertain terms <clears throat> that you're waiting for reviews and you're about to get a bunch of reviews that have been curated by the publisher for their likelihood of being extremely positive in an attempt to manipulate your view of Dragon Age, the Veilgar. They want you to think there is a universal consensus that the game is amazing, thereby convincing you that you should try it, but also influencing future review scores as it's yep. difficult to be the outlier. So if you see a bunch of positive review scores come That's out That's what I mean, guys. I gotta play it. I gotta play it and give you my honest review. Think about all the people that are gonna be playing. I, I'm, do I'm doing, I would be doing everyone the service. Afterward and how much pressure they're gonna feel to give the game slightly better score than they would. I hope there's a, a little sponsorship for it so I can get the game for free. Okay, if I, if, okay, listen, if there was a sponsorship and I could get the game for free, then can I play it? What do you guys think? <laughs> would have given it just to avoid maybe some undue pressure. Sometimes that doesn't even happen consciously. It's just done subconsciously. And I want to be very clear here that I don't think that the press and creators publishing their videos early are going to be lying. Because you know I would tell you exactly what I think about it. However, these reviewers have been screened to maximize the chances that you're seeing positive reviews. There will probably be some exceptions, of course. I don't think everyone's going to give the game. I think I would give a very balanced take on it from the point of view of game design. I think my review would be pretty good, honestly. You. But EA is banking that those are few. Because I'm not, I'm not like super woke, but I'm also not super psycho anti woke. I have a good, Far good review. In an attempt to keep the aggregate score of the game high. Once again, I do think he's making a very compelling argument as to the potential logic behind EA's actions. However, I myself am also a bit more cynical, it seems. While I'm sure that there are going to be people who genuinely do enjoy the game, including some who are reviewing it, I absolutely do think that there are going to be some people who are lying about just how much they enjoyed the game. It goes without saying that we can call such people shills. I'd also like to go back to Wolfhard FPS's tweet once again, but here's why. Some of the responses to it are extremely amusing and contradict some of the very reasonable logic that we already talked about analyzing the entire situation. For example, this tweet reading, my dude, I get that it sucks that you and others didn't get codes, but suggesting that's because you weren't a big fan of the game is freaking ridiculous. And leaving this post up is just going to give uh -huh. the chuds more brain dead reasons to attack the game, devs and fans alike. Because I get called the chud. Apparently analyzing a situation where corporations may be operating in shady manners and analyzing the logic behind such actions, including their drive to manipulate public sentiment. I'm not a chud. Well, doing that just makes you a chud. Once again, like I said yesterday, there's this weird crossover with some of the largest bootlickers on the I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually independent. It's just some people are a little more crazy than others, you know? Internet. Some of the biggest corporate defenders out there simultaneously LARPing as if they're wonderful. I like pretty much aligned with like Elon. It's the best way to explain it. It's like I'm I'm pretty I'm honestly pretty moderate. Activists. Another commonly shared sentiment between Dragon Age fans is that Failguard just doesn't feel like a Dragon Age game. And people are often wondering what happened to Bioware. I myself haven't played that many Bioware games. However, one of my favorite PC games of all time, and one that helped inspire my love for PC gaming, is in fact the original Neverwinter Nights. So I found this particular mm -hmm. part of Mr. Maddie mm -hmm. Plays video to be very interesting. Let's get moderates don't exist. Well, I mean, it's getting a lot harder to be moderate as well, I'll say. It's getting a lot harder. When you fucking let the entire circus out, it, it, yeah, it's a little bit harder. Starting with the narrative, this is what I have the most to say about when it comes to the game itself, because it's where I think most of the problems in Dragon Age the Veil Guard lie. Tonally, this is just not a Dragon Age game. There's no other way to put it for me. In okay. writing, in music, in visuals, in character work, there were many- See, but here's the thing, here's the thing though. I'm not invested in Dragon Age at all. So again, that's why I think I would do a great review because I'm I'm not invested at all in Dragon Age. It's I want to know if it's a good game. I felt my hands were on an entirely different IP. Now, before I go forward, I just want to frame my criticism a little bit more here in that 
I have been a lifelong Bioware fan. My favorite game of all time is Star Wars Knights of the Republic, which is a 2003 RPG from Bioware. But also Never played it. games, as you know, like Mass Effect, like Dragon Age Origins. But I have also not fooled myself that the people who have made those games I adore so much I played Mass are Effect, no longer though. at the company, or at least most. I played Mass Effect 1. I think I played 2. I'm not sure. It's a pretty good game. I thought Mass Effect was good. Them aren't. This is an unfortunate realization that many of us are having with companies like Bioware. I enjoyed my time with Mass Effect. like Bethesda, specifically with Bioware and Veilguard. It seems like they're more intent on pushing out their old fans and instead trying to find a new group of fans, a more why modern would you do this? group of fans, as these corpos like to say. But, but why though? Why would you, okay, this is, dude, this doesn't make any sense. So like from a business perspective, right? If you have a group of diehard fans that will buy anything, why would you want them? Why would you want to get the people that are most likely to get pissed off at you for like the slightest thing that you do wrong? Why would you want to cater to those people? Like a, a small minority of people that they're so volatile that like you say one wrong thing and they all fucking hate you versus like a dedicated group of RPG players who have been around forever that love your stuff and are, are, are loyal. It doesn't fucking make sense. Ultimately, while many of the reviews coming out today are overly optimistic. Something ha- uh, uh, Cash just says something happened between Mass Effect 2 and 3 that made the company not make good games anymore. There are still some reviews that are much <clears throat> more critical and as some would say, much more real about their opinions. As mentioned, please consider checking out Mr. Matty Play's video, which I'll link in the description. Another review that seems very interesting, and yet one that I have not had the time to check out yet, is the one released by Skilla. Fittingly titled, I do not recommend Dragon Age the Veil Guard. Based off some of the top oh, comments shit. though, it seems like one of the criticisms he might include in this video is one that we've talked about in prior videos on Veil Guard, which is seemingly how the devs didn't want the player to be able to make any sort of evil choices, that they'd be too quote-unquote icky, so to speak, which was apparently some of the logic as to why they also removed the options for blood magic. As you know, many people and companies are currently attempting to prop this game up. However, given how terrible the situation looks, it seems highly unlikely that they'll succeed in the long run. Ultimately, of course, make up your own opinion on this game, but from what I've seen so far, it's not looking good at all. Wasn't that like the whole appeal of like these kind of games is that you could you could make the wrong choice? You can make the morally ambiguous choice rather than the the straight up like g- good boy paladin choice. You could like do something a little bit gray, morally gray. Yeah. The most disturbing things, as we just talked about a moment ago, is how so many gaming companies like Bioware, etc., <clears throat> have willingly decided to go down this path. Let me know what you think about all this stuff in the comments. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you enjoyed my coverage, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next one. Damn, Earlier pretty, today, pretty good the video. Embargo for- I, dude, I actually am very interested in checking out uh, checking this out. Anyway, if you guys want to check out the video, uh, Hero Hero Hey Hero releases a lot of these kind of videos, uh, kind of like another content creator that does a lot of like kind of game anime industry news uh i'm gonna link it there apparently there are some uh some screenshots here i'm a little skeptical this one is this real is this a real screenshot there's no way this is real no fucking way there's no way this is real so what you, your character turns trans in the middle of the thing of the game take a long hard look on it kid i always show the face of a hero who can get it done wait what does this have to do with this though uh, dude, I, I need to know, like, how does this actually happen in the game? I don't know how I feel about this. I'd have to think about it because I don't necessarily have a problem with them exploring stuff like this in a game. For me, it would depend on how shoehorned it, it, it is. And, and you know, I'm, I'm trying to be as generous as possible, obviously. Like, I'm not, I don't know yet, like, how this actually, I, I'd love to see, like, when the game comes out, like, someone's, I mean, you know that when the game comes out, they're going to release this quest line, like, on YouTube, like, instantly. Like, somebody's going to record it and, and uh, release it. I think then I'd be able to have like a better idea uh, of it. Of course, it, it is a little strange that uh, they would have a quest for this. There could be ways that you could do it that would that would make sense and it would be it would be fine. I don't have a problem in general with media that explores different aspects of the human condition. I really don't. If you made an anime about being gay or something, I don't really have a problem with it. If you make like a show about how you're living in a society where you're experiencing racism, I have no problem with that. Those are all parts of things that humans experience. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, the fact that that there's differences between between genders and people experiencing, you know, like if you had like a woman that was more of a tomboy and then she was living in a society in which they looked down upon her because of it and you made a whole game about that or a show about that i don't have a problem with that at all actually i know some people might think i do but i don't so it's kind of like 
like some of my favorite shows like explore stuff like that like this is one of my favorite animes this whole show is about that yeah so this one it's really it's re it's it's about the world building so in Simoon, so this is a show about it's the, the whole theme of it is not wanting to grow up that's the whole thought that's the whole theme of the show um but the world build in the world building basically every every person in the world is born as a girl and then when you become 18 i think it's 18 you go to like a shrine basically and then the goddess or whatever tempest Spatium gives you like you're you basically get to pick but if you don't pick then the god picks for you and that's like the whole story i'm not i started watching this because I, I i saw this scene and then they pop out and then they kiss each other and i was like damn i love your 